What's up everybody, my name is Cap the Everyday Gamer and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Many, many of you might recognize this little contraption I uploaded several months ago, my TNT Super Cannon. Very proud of how this worked out. It would launch a block of ignited TNT over a hundred blocks. You can see it way off in the distance to do some pretty awesome stuff. But Mojang released some updates when Minecraft 1.8 came out and it no TNT blocks no longer function very well with flowing water like this. So it's causing a lot of problems. And I've had a lot of people who checked out the video, thank you for that by the way, come in and tell me, hey, it's not working anymore. They're getting instances like this where they push the button, get the TNT cannon ready to fire. They see it primed ready and then it shoots it way up in the sky and it doesn't actually do anything. Or, in a worst case scenario, they see it actually not shoot at all and it just blows a big hole in the ground. It's very, very frustrating. So what I did was, I went back to the drawing board. I figured out a way to get it to work in 1.8.1. So I'm going to show you guys how to actually do that now. Ah, welcome to the next generation of TNT Super Cannons. Now, this particular design doesn't shoot quite as far as the original TNT cannon does because since the lighted TNT blocks function differently with flowing water, it doesn't create as much of a compact boom. But you can still get a nice little launch TNT block that'll fly out a good little distance here without any problems. And you'll see it actually does make it to the ground level so you can continue griefing and trolling your fellow friends. This is really easy to make and slightly scalable. So I'll show you actually how to make this here. All right, here we go. Show you guys actually how to make this. Now, real quick before I start making this here, what I need to tell you guys is this is done in Minecraft 1.8.1 on PC. So if a little ways down the road, you see Mojang has put out another update that changes the way TNT works with water or makes it non-functional, we'll figure out a way to get it to work again hopefully what well, I've always said where there's a will there's a way around so what you need to do to start with just for a basic level cannon we'll do just like that is dig out five holes this way and get your fence put it in right here now this is going to leave four blocks here now since TNT blocks no longer work correctly with flowing water what we need to do is get it flowing in two directions here so we put a block this way and a block this way now you see how we got the source block here and the source block here, but these two here are just flowing towards each other. With the way they changed TNT now, if it's in the source block, it tries to push it away from itself, and it'll continue to push away until it gets far enough away to explode. Well, with them having going back and forth like this, facing each other, it'll get the TNT stuck in the middle, so they won't actually go in the wrong direction. Everything you need here is going to be in the toolbar down here. You got the dispenser, not a dropper, dispenser, a button, some redstone, a redstone repeater, TNT of course, water, whatever block you want to use. I like using blocks of iron just because the frames are set up here and uh, highlighted so it's a lot easier to kind of count them out and the fins that we put here. Now you can use a sign. I've seen some instances where I've tried using signs before but sometimes the TNT block will fall through the sign instead of sitting on top of it and it just screws up the whole thing and it won't shoot out. So I recommend using a fence down here. Alright, so we start off, put your droppers, put one here and one here facing that direction and one not facing up, face right here and right here and you're not far from being done. Go ahead and load these bad boys up with TNT and if you're curious as to how I'm getting blocks to 64 it's just the, whilst, uh, the mouse wheel click. A wouse, yeah that's what we need is a wouse. Okay now the direction of the fence is the direction it's actually going to go. In case you run into a problem I haven't tested this both ways I always put the first source block down here by the fence at the first of it where it's going to shoot from and do the one down here second. So if you put it down here and then down here and you notice some problems try doing it the other way around to see if that actually fixes your problem. Then you put a block here and another dispenser on top of it here. Now I have this block sitting here that way it drops the light of TNT on top of the fence. If you put it right here down one block below that, it, sometimes it dispenses it and pushes off to the side, it ends up going sideways, ends up in the water, and just causes some problems and it just doesn't work like it's supposed to. So I definitely recommend putting that here. Now I put a block right here, this is where I'm going to put my button so I can make it a little bit easier. A little bit of redstone because I like to make this completely as automated as possible by one button click. You can, if you want to, slap another button on here and then click this one, get the timing down to however you want to, and then click this one to push it out manually and it'll shoot it off. But if the timing's a little bit off, it'll blow up in the air before it hits the ground. So I'm going to show you how to do it with the redstone and the repeaters the way I have it. 
Now having these two blocks side by side like this, as soon as this one's activated, it'll activate the one next to it. So you don't have to worry about running an expensive redstone off to the side for these additional ones. If you decide to scale it up, like I'll show you in a little bit, you're going to have to. But for now, you don't have to. So you're going to put two repeaters in, just like that. A redstone here. Then you're going to do four repeaters. Redstone, redstone, redstone. And that's pretty much it. Now all these on the side you set to a full ticks, like this. One, two, three clicks. This one, three clicks, and this one, two clicks. If you do one more, the timing could get slightly off, and it's not going to function correctly. So you can see, these two look identical now. Then all you have to do is just click the button. It drops four TNT inside the water. And then all you have to do, I would recommend doing just that. Test it to make sure it works before you put one in here. Because if you put one in here and it doesn't work right, it blows a big hole in the ground. So now that you know it works, we get the redstone to kick off, and boom, there we go. Every so often, the way it drops it out of here, it'll get slightly off, just slightly off on the fence, and you see it shoots just a little bit sideways. Most of the time, it's pretty straight through. And that's pretty much it. I'll show you really quickly what it looks like when it's fully, when it's scaled up one more to go a little bit further. Alrighty, and here we go. I've scaled it up. Instead of having just four dispensers, I have it up to six here. Basically, you just extend one more block over of water so that you have three middle blocks of water. See, so we got the source block here, another source block under there, and then one, two, three. These are all set up the same. Um, you have to run an extra red, uh, redstone block out to these out over here, or it won't actually function correctly. Whoops because this one right here will trigger the one beside it but it won't trigger this third one here and then all you have to do is just extend your repeaters out a little bit further than you did over there I mean basically it's just one more row out but it's the same exact layout now I have tried going four on each side and I noticed that by the time you get to four it doesn't really do as much it actually can reduce it a little bit more so we'll test this out here so we got six blocks of TNT in there let's see how much further that goes yeah, there we go. We got some distance now. Check that out. Awesome. Now, a real quick tip here in case any guys want to do this. A real quick question I know some people ask is why I haven't decided to do like I normally do and hide the redstone underground. I just wanted to do this as a proof of concept to show you guys what it actually looks like and how it works out. If you want to go through and hide all the redstone underground and set it up so it's a little bit tidier, that's fine. I just wanted to show you how it actually works out. You guys go nuts. See what you can scale it up to. I might see if I can come up with another mega cannon and see how far off it goes. And another tip is don't put any additional blocks like right here. Like a lot of people will uh, try and recommend having a, a barrier set up this way. What it does is it causes when the TT drops out, it doesn't always fall straight down like it's supposed to and sit here. It kind of pushes it off and ends up blowing a giant hole in the, in the world. I'm not going to demonstrate that because that would just be catastrophic. But that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below. Uh, we'll see how far we can ramp this up. But uh, in the meantime, if you do want to download it, I'll put the link in the video description and plus the link to the video to the previous one in case you're using an older build of Minecraft and want to use the more compact automated version. Uh, in the meantime, you guys have a good one, and I'll catch you later.